Hello, Carl from City with you just at a pond in Derby. I'm going to fit the glass and the liner today. Got nice pergola and stuff on top of it. So we've got the we've got a box welded liner that's going to go in, and it's a DIY build. And actually, it's better than some of the professional builds I've seen. We're just going to knock a couple of these little bits of mortar off here. Other than that, everything looks hunky dory. So it's going to be a case of so the way it's been done. We've just got a batter around here to make a recess. And the glass is pretty much the thickness of this king span, so that just means that the inside is going to be pretty much flush all the way. So I just screwed in a wooden batten to make a recess behind the block work. That means you don't have to cut the block work because that had just weakened the structure anyway. And then um, you've got bits of wood going all the way down to the floor here, I've here. And then um, one across, and the glass will just sit on there, we'll bond it to there, nice and easy. Uh, so just put blobs of MF 300 on there, like I say we use blobs, some people watch the videos said that's not going to hold water but it's not meant to, it's just meant to hold the glass in, so uh, that's why we need blobs, no point in wasting sealant is it? Drop you up there, show you the rest. Just to, yeah, just to make sure. <laughs> so what I'll do, I'll stick that on there for you. So all you need to do is just lift, lift it up there, just to give us a bit of purchase. So I'm not leaning and bring it in. So just slowly lift, and then. You don't shred anymore. Yeah, no messing about. Go. You can say you fit in a window now as well, can't you? Everyone, well, you should see where it's like a two gram piece of glass because you can tell whose piece of glass it is. There you go. You can rest now. So we'll get these plants on, then we'll get a little spirit level on just to just to double check. Do you want to do the others with the spirit level? These are going off your level. <laughs> <laughs> you need to watch it because you can totally off now. <laughs> Stick it in the middle. Alright then. Yeah, it looks bang on that. It's done a good job. It's alright. There you go. It's all right. <laughs> I'm not a builder. Well, you can be now. Nah, I'm all right, thanks. Hard work being a builder, isn't it? Yeah. These blocks are annoying. Yeah, just heavy, aren't they? Yeah. Right, so if you want to grab some Kingspan. It's like just an inch sliver. I see what you mean though regarding the, uh, the silicon coming out around the edge if it wasn't the... Yeah, you got a, like a an edge that's more natural if you finish up to the glass rather than doing a bead in there. People do a bead in there thinking that's going to hold water out but if this one's failing you've got a problem. As long as you do this one properly yeah. you'll be alright. Fine, I think I've got some scotch bright, I'll just rough it up. You want it to be a 
as dry as possible for the best fun. Um, the uh, Charleston Astro as well. Mm -hmm. Is that going to make any difference if he slots it away? What glue it in? No, I haven't glued it in yet. What we normally do is just. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> the better brute force always helps. Yeah, I just didn't want to glue it in just yet because I didn't know. Yeah, so with it like that, once it's all glued in and everything, what you'll have to do is this one's going to be twist. Alright, so that's not, it doesn't matter about this twisting or anything, does it? No. So that's got you have to go on it. It's, just, it's the same It's the same with the others. Yeah. Just, I was going to wait. It's all just dry fitted. Yeah, yeah. Nothing to do with okay. Yeah, so once I've finished, get some of foam in there. Good, yeah. Give it 24 hours and it'll be fine. Do I? Right. <laughs> well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> so how many do you fit in a day then? Glass. Do what? How many glass windows do you fit a day? We don't do too many at the moment. We're, well, we just do what what's on YouTube, really. We probably do a couple of months. Because I'm uh, quite busy building the kits and all that at our unit as well. So, uh, and the reason that I put it all on YouTube is to encourage people to do it themselves. If they, and most people now are, feel better doing it themselves, which I'm happy about because it means I can spend more time with the baby and missus and yeah. stuff like that. But not everyone fancies it. It's not everyone's cup of tea. So that's where we all we will step in and do it. We've got we've got quite a few fitting books for next month now, like big windows, like the size of that wall pretty much, where they don't feel up to it. Thank you. It's like perfect width that as well, almost. Yeah. Is there a recommended thickness to the underline? Thickness, it's, just, it's like paper, it's like grams a square metre. So this is 260 GSM, this one. So this is like what the pond builders use. You can get really cheap, nasty stuff. It doesn't really do anything. We don't tend to use that, there's just no point. one hobby where it really pays to just get the proper stuff yeah there's no point in doing half a job because you just end up redoing it a few times so you're not using it on the sides might as well double it up eh? Yeah. it just acts like socks underlay like so it don't like rub well, so it's sense. just yeah. sort of like slides on this instead of on the floor use them as knee pads when it's in the head of summer yeah. and you put in the liner in and then you kneel down on the black liner Ooh, it's abs it's like it can be 60 degrees of adult temperature thing on it so I use them little circle things as knee pads normally nearly chopped my finger off a few times doing this as well did a good job though I thought I think probably because you've done it so many times now you find it used to Yeah, it's one of them that if you do it confidently you normally do a better job. Because people are normally like shaking or whatever. <laughs> like especially when they're cutting the liner, because that's an important bit. But once you've done it like three hundred times, it's just like a second nature. Yeah. Like just muscle memory takes over and you just crack it on and get it done.
doesn't go on, there. on the top. On there, yeah. So you don't actually go on the, to the inside and around? No, when you're fiberglass and you're fiberglass on the inside. Yeah. But when you're doing the liner, the liner just bonds on there. So I'll put the liner over, I'll cut this out. And then you kind of lift it up and squeeze it all down. And then press it all down. Yeah. Because uh, my logic is if you put in 12 screws in this, you put in 12 holes in your liner as well as your bottom drain hole, so there's 12 yeah, more things yeah, to go yeah. wrong, isn't there? Really? It makes sense. It does make sense. I like to think it does as well. <laughs> I don't take them off, it? Oh, they, you can take them off. <laughs> yeah. I take the other ones off. <laughs> You could take it off and give it a give it a nudge, and I'll give it a bit of a kick, and it wouldn't move. Probably you can try it if you want. Nah, nah, you can give it a go. I'm, right. I'm not guaranteeing. Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> yeah, I think the next one will be for the past. Yeah. And obviously, a window in it as well, so you will be getting another call from me. Okay. Well, if you use the fiberglass, not anytime soon. But yeah. You will. If you use the fiberglass that we use, they they fit the windows while the fiberglass in, so you can get it all okay. done. That one's worth that cheaper as well. All right, yeah. you built a chuck us a liner, please. Is there any specific orientation that you want? The, just the length way, so as it is now, right here. Right. Yeah, so it doesn't just roll in the length way. Smells like, um, yeah. It smells like almonds or uh, cherry bake wells. Should have nothing sharp on my shoes. Nope. That's where the underlay keeps moving all the time. During the army, we learned that if you smell this smell, that means pushy nuclear warfare is happening. And if you smell almonds, you start banging your pants. <laughs> I do a lot watching, a lot learning stuff. Yeah. Doesn't mean I never do this myself.
a big patch for you. <laughs> you shouldn't ever need it, but just in case you do ever need it, yeah. Yeah, I've over ordered on the uh, the king span. Yeah. Where I can build something for the window for the winter. Yeah. Put in front. Yeah, it's good that because it is because people well in insulate the pond and then in winter this is just like leaving your front door open. Yeah. So I've got enough to do that with some fall tape bubble wrap, you know, make it nice and spongy. Yeah. To stick in there. Good stuff. And maybe another one to put over the top of here, but leave some gap towards the bottom end, just so some of the, the gap okay. can come off. Yeah, good stuff. There you go. There's no. Uh... Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> Nothing all of it in now, except for some sealant. Believe it or not, people for this size window sometimes will order like 12 tubes of sealant for this size window and I've, I'm still on my first one really. Yeah. So uh, you don't need to use as much of it but people always want to go like above and beyond and overdo it and make that like, over engineer make sure it's all going to be fine. I'm not complaining about it because there was a lot of sealant but there's going to be loads of people with loads of sealant sat in their garage that are never going to end up using. So we say um, this will do one line about two and a half metres long. But people normally put two. Like if it's on a fiberglass pond, you, you have to put more on. What would you have to put more on fiberglass? Because fiberglass is a solid, it's not flexible, so you need to fill the gaps around the window. Whereas with this, we've been able to do the gaps around the window with the king's pond nice and easy. Yeah. On fiberglass, instead of doing blobs like that, you do a full bead like this because that is in a waterproof bit. And then um, you do a bead on this side as well, so you do a full bead on the inside instead of them blobs, and then you do a full bead on the outside, and then you might have gaps to fill as well. Start in the middle, beauty in this way is you get no creases. So if you do get a crease by the time you work from there to here, the seal looks flexible enough to manoeuvre it. Because if you had the liner in between there and you pushed it in, you'd have creases and pinch points in the corners, wouldn't you? Yeah, where the yeah. liner's got to go like this. So yeah, I did see a video where they were tr putting the glass up against the liner and cutting the liner out then. Mm. Whereas this way... This way it looks neater. We've, had, we've never had a... A problem, such wood. <laughs> Installing it this way. Whereas we have the other way because and it was always because one of these corners there was just a little bit where the ceiling didn't fill or was pushed too thin or something like that. Hey, 
uh, the whole process of putting glass in, doing the liner, what's the worst bit for yourself? But what do you least look forward to? It's all the same, really. Come on, there's got to be something you're like, oh, I don't really want to do that. What I'd do? Um, well, not with this. This is this is the easiest part of the job for me. Yeah, just because I've done it that many times, all of this is just that easy stuff. Yeah, but this is stuff that people normally only do once in a lifetime, so that's why it's interesting for everyone else to watch. Like this bit here where I'm cutting this liner now, this is where people don't like doing it. It's really if you make a mistake though, so it's a costly mistake, isn't it? Well, not really, because this sealant will fill a gap, so if you've got a big thing there, and you'd just patch that other bit of liner, you'd be able to just stick a patch in it, it'd be that easy. We've had someone make a box loaded liner with my sealant and five bits of liner. So, uh, and it's held. And it's, it's still well, it's been full of water for about six weeks now. Wow. It's called Koi Central on YouTube. And you... he's, uh, he's got a funny shaped pond and he, he, he wanted, he couldn't afford fiberglass or he didn't want to concrete it and lose gallons for fiberglass and plus it would have cost a fortune. And he was in his old pond, he spliced tape, which is similar to this, which is dead expensive, like per meter of that tape. You got to prime it and do all this, and if you mess it up, then you just can't do it anymore. You've got to start with a new bit of liner. So use my sealant on the, all these gaps and all this weird, funny shaped pond, and it's still holding now. Yeah. He phoned me up and said, Do you think it'll work? And I said, I've no idea, I wouldn't recommend it, but do it, buy the sealant off me, and if it doesn't work, I'll just give you the money back for the sealant. I mean, that's an incentive to do it. Like yeah, I said, I said if it fails, then I'm not saying it will or it won't because I don't know, I've never done it before. But I said it bonds rubber to rubber, so there's no reason why it wouldn't, but I've not done it, so I don't know it. And he was like, all right, yeah, might as well try that. I said, as long as you document it, put it on YouTube, then I'm happy. Yes. I'm yeah. going to have to watch it. Yeah, so I said, even if it fails, I said, put it on because it's. I want people to know what you can do. I don't want to blag it and say yeah, it can so do all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I know what you can and can't do, so you yeah. got the wrong I said I want, I want to know what it does. So if someone asks me a question, I can say yes or no to it. And now I can just forward them a video of him doing it, and they can go, all right, well, I can see that works. That's good. 